What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I've got another fun match here. If you guys are into these types of videos, make sure you hit that like button. It does really help out the channel and really pushes me to make some more Wi-Fi battles for you guys. Anyways, as for my team, of course I'm working with a degenerate group of rejects here and my opponent seems to have somewhat of a rain team. I'm seeing the Politoed mixed with the Kingdra along with there's like a Manaphy. Uh, but overall, very scary team. Of course, Kingdra is always scary in the rain. Manaphy is one of the more powerful setup mons in the game, which I think is actually even banned to Uber at this point. But anyway, I got my work cut out for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and decide to lead off with Cradilly. I figured they probably want to toss out the old Politoed just to get the rain up. And Cradilly actually has a pretty solid matchup against a lot here. It allows me to kind of just get up my Stealth Rock for free, come out here and just air out the old head dildos and have a good time. So I decided to go for the Stealth Rock here. Worst case scenario, Politoed just basically hits me with an Ice Beam. But then I realized actual worst case scenario, thing fucking puts me to sleep. Who's running Hypnosis these days? I swear to God, if it was me, I would miss about 17 of them before I hit. Um, but it does put me right to sleep, and you know, that's kind of annoying. Now, it's not horrible. I know that, of course, Ice Beam will hurt. It's super effective, but I'm, you know, kind of a designated special defense wall here, so I can take a few of them. But in the long run, I also don't really want Cradily to take too much damage early. I know it's a nice switch in to a lot of things. Plus, um, I can keep this thing in the back pocket asleep, and he can't really put anything else to sleep because of the sleep clause. So I think I'm going to switch right into the old Chungus here, as he actually has the same idea and ends up switching into the Scizor. So, you know, freaking Scizor and <laughs> Bit Barrel come out basically similar to how you'd feel set up on a blind date when it's something you were not expecting at all, and you're like, oh, hey, how's it, uh... How's it going? I guess I could work with this. I don't know. So, I mean, I'm in the rain. I'm deciding, you know what, I'm going to go for a curse. I think this thing's probably going to Swords Dance on me, seeing me as a nice little fodder setup, man. But it actually just U-turns. So it just leaves the date immediately without even getting to know me. And honestly, the fuck, bro. Like, literally, come on. <laughs> but they decide to switch into the Toxic Croak here. Uh, that's unfortunate. Knowing that there's a Toxic Croak around uh, kind of really hinders the barrel's ability to really do anything just due to the fact that this thing does have the dry skin ability. Homeboy needs some lotion and I cannot hit it with a water attack. So I do get my curse up and of course with my simple ability that sets me in a nice plus two attack, plus two defense, minus two speed. Now ordinarily this would be a decent time to get off an aqua jet but not today against this dry mofo. So I decide, now this is a little bit of an interesting play, I'm gonna end up going into the Frostitute here. Now Jinx doesn't look like she's gonna be able to do a whole lot in this match. Of course it would be nice to keep her around, but I decide that I'm essentially just gonna sack Jinx here. Um, I thought maybe there's a way I could come in and live something, but there's pretty much no way against freaking Toxicroak here. Um, but what that does is it opens me up to basically bring in anything I would like for free, and that would be my Venomoth. I, in hindsight, I probably should have just switched into Venomoth on the Drain Punch. Knowing that he was just gonna go for a Drain Punch there kind of made sense. Um, you know, I four times resist that, but I want to maintain as much health on the Venomoth as possible. I know that there is uh, a Bullet Punch Scissor over there. I know I can take at least one Bullet Punch with this thing if I don't have any damage, so I'm really trying to conserve this thing as much as possible. Plus, like I said, Jinx wasn't super useful in this matchup anyway, but uh, they decide to switch that thing out. It has a horrible matchup here as I go for the Sleep Powder, and it misses, because why would I be able to get some free momentum any time in my life? But... <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to go for it again here as they actually actually end up switching into the Manaphy. Now the reason for that is because this thing's ability in the rain, it will immediately heal itself. So it gets put to sleep, put to, put down for a nice little nap, and then boom, woke right back up. <laughs> He's like, that. What, what the hell just happened? I just blinked? I don't know. But I predict this thing to go for the Tail Glow here. Now this is pretty much what Manaphy does. It gets that Tail Glow, even though I mean, his, his head has a tail, I guess. I don't really know what's glowing there, but... I decide to go for the Quiver Dance knowing that it's going to do that. Now, this allows me to now be faster, and I'm looking nice and scary with my nice special attack boost. So the rain actually goes away this turn, and this allows me to put this thing asleep without the support of its stupid little raindrops. It's going to stay asleep. So I go for the powder. I do actually hit it. So, you know, I'm sitting two for three on sleep powders, and Venomoth, you've, you've gained back my respect. Thank you for that. Um, but yeah, goes to sleep, shows off his nice eye new eyelashes, and at this point, I can pretty much just go for another Quiver Dance. And I'm thinking Venomoth has a great matchup here on everything except for the Scizor. Um, so if I can get to the point where I can take an attack still, I can I can get a nice little little sweep going and open up the team for the rest of my squad to kind of uh, kind of make some something happen late game. So um, I figure two is probably enough here. I'm just gonna go right for the Bug Buzz. It remains asleep like a good little Manaphy, and that is going to knock this thing out. So didn't have to worry about getting swept by the Tail Glow Manaphy, and that is always a dub. That's actually the first one I've faced 
um, in the Wi-Fi battles that I've had. I'm mostly just finding my matches on code 2022-2021 if you guys are interested. But uh, back to the match. In comes Big Meaty Claws here. And I actually end up going for the Sleep Powder here. Um, knowing he's going to get off a Bullet Punch, I know I can take at least one depending on the matchup. Or depending on the... Uh, the set the scissor I was working with it actually shows me it's gonna be a life orb one so it's definitely offensive um, but I take one and I put it to sleep which is kind of a dumb move because I risk the sleep powder um, but with my ability tinted lens bug buzz is able to just kill this thing anyway especially with two quiver dances so in hindsight yeah I probably should not have done that but at least we're able to flex on him I go for the bug buzz and I think if this thing was like max special defense and HP it could have potentially lived one but uh, no harm, no foul, as I was going to take a bullet punch regardless, and it's not too big of a deal. So I'm able to take care of the scissor, which is a huge threat, and now in comes the Politoed. I'm thinking, Psh, this Politoed, he comes in smiling, but he's about to absolutely get bopped uh, by a Bug Buzz as well, as my last Life Orb recoil left me at three, which is nice. So I get off another Bug Buzz here, and it actually lives, to my surprise. Did not expect old Politoed to take that, but it does actually live. And I just knock myself out like an absolute hero with my own life orb. I say I will not be giving you the satisfaction of hitting me with an ice beam. And Venomoth has effectively kind of done what it needed to do in terms of poking holes in the team here. Uh, because now I can kind of, uh, with, my, with my sweepers that I've got left, I should be able to hopefully clean stuff up. But it's still, you know, quite an uphill fight here. So, I decide to bring in Krakatoa. I'm able to go for the extra sensory here as that takes out the Politoed. Now, I lock myself into extra sensory just so... Toxicroak can't come in and things like that, but they do still have this Kingdra. Now the Politoed being dead is amazing because now that thing cannot come in and just set up the rain again. So the rain that they've got is going to be the last rain for the match. So the Kingdra's kind of got to work with what it has here. And luckily I do still have Cradilly in the back specifically for this Kingdra. Um, it is kind of forced to go for a Draco Meteor rather than a water attack because I am um, Storm Drain. So I would suck up some water moves and it kind of just has to go for the Draco Meteor there, unless it had Dragon Pulse or something. But uh, it does a lot of damage, but with a special attack drop, it's looking pretty nice if this thing wants to stay in. It's not too big of a deal. Um, I'm just going to stay and go for a nice little Stealth Rock here. He actually misses a Draco Meteor, which you hate to see, but really not too big of a deal as I just, you know, stay and asleep. Cradilly, you useless asshole. Wake up, man. This is not time for a nap here. I could really use some Stealth Rock support. Um, but they decide to switch out the Kingdra. They're like, all right, I'm not going to try that again. That did not work out for me. And Toxicroak has a, a better matchup. So I do actually wake up and I get up the Stealth Rock. So send up them late game Stealth Cox is not usually too bad. Um, it's not great specifically in this matchup, but Cradle Lead really didn't have much I could do anyway. So I'm able to wake up at least, and that's kind of nice. So I definitely do not have anything that wants to switch into a Drain Punch. Uh, so I have to let Credily go down here. Now that is wildly unfortunate because it's my best answer to that Kingdra. So unfortunately I do have to lose that thing. I probably could have played around with that Credily a little bit better. Uh, but Toxicroak's out here just absolutely soaking in the rain back to full health. And now I get a free switch. So I go, I go back into the Typhlosion. Now honestly having extra sensory on this set never comes in handy until the one time you're like, thank God I have extra sensory. <laughs> uh, so I decide to go for that. Of course I'm Choice Scarf and I'm able to outspeed, um, but they are just gonna switch right back into this Kingdra. Keep in mind, rain turns are slowly whittling away. So Typhlosion could outspeed this thing uh, pretty soon here. Plus I do have the slacking specifically uh, if I'm at full health, slacking kind of is the, the mod desi designated to take care of this Kingdra. So I decide to switch out here. Typhlosion is extremely useful for me in the rest of this match as uh, Chungus pretty much just comes in for Death Fodder. Actually misses a Hydro Pump, so dude, this Kingdra just really cannot hit anything for its damn life out here. Get it, go check out and get some glasses, bro, for real. Um, the rain actually goes away, which is great. Um, it actually seemed like pretty quick. Maybe that thing, was that thing not carrying Damp Rock? I'm not sure. But, uh, goes for another Hydro Pump here. That kind of leads me to believe that this thing is choiced. It could potentially be choice Specs, because Specs Kingdra in the rain hits like an absolute monster. Uh, but Chungus goes down. Unfortunately, I, I probably should have gone for an Aqua Jet just for like extra damage there, just because. Um, but not too big of a deal, because now I can bring in Slacking for free. And slacking, one of the best revenge killers in the game. I'll tell you what, you do not want to be on the other end of a slacking. It shit is ridiculous. So I'm actually able to outspeed. I hit it with an earthquake just because I don't want to miss anything. Plus with the choice band, it's pretty much killing everything. And uh, King Drain's so strong without his rain support, I'll tell you what. But back comes the Toxicroak, who's just been an absolute issue 
this whole damn time, I swear to God. But my plan is this, I save the slacking in the back for later. I know that Typhlosion can come in and take at least one Drain Punch. Since there's been no Stealth Rock on my side of the field, it's really kind of opened up these opportunities to save these mods at like full health. So, big ol' Sausage Puppy takes the Drain Punch nicely, and that does not really matter because now this kind of allows me to outspeed with the Choice Scarf. As long as Typhlosion's got a sliver of health, we are, we are in good shape. So I just go right for uh, the Flamethrower here, knowing that there is still that damn Raikou in the back. I honestly kind of forgot about this fella, but that's why I didn't click Extra Sensory. Um, Raikou comes in, takes some Stealth Rock damage, so maybe Cradilia's Stealth Rock actually did help me out here. Because as you'll see, that damage looks really close to being able to kill this thing if that was maximum damage. Um, who knows, but I do outspeed because of the Scarf, and that is going to take out the Raikou. So, love to see when a Raikou honestly poses no threat in a match where I brought all in you Pokemon, so that's amazing. But, their final Pokemon is finally this Toxicroak, and essentially all I have to do is knock it out with the Flamethrower. I was kind of expecting a Sucker Punch here, but with the slacking in the back, uh, there's kind of no way that this, this, this ends up bad. So I go for the Flamethrower, actually knock it down to like 10 HP, and get a burn. So my bad about the burn, but it goes with the Drain Punch, and with the burn, I'm actually able to live it with 7 HP, which is kind of amazing. Um, and also, with its recovery, it's not going to die to its burn damage, plus the Life Orb, so that's kind of kind of like, damn, this Toxic Rogue really hanging on till the bitter end over here, I swear to God. Uh, I go for one last Flamethrower, but it shows me it's got the Sucker Punch, and that does actually knock out Krakatoa, um, so I kind of was not expecting that, <laughs> but... Uh, unfortunately for him, Life Orb is going to take it out, and since I do have the slacking in the back, I am going to be able to win this match 1-0. to zero. So I thought that was quite an interesting game there. It kind of didn't really go how I expected it to, and there's definitely some bad plays on either end, but that's kind of just the way it goes. Wi-Fi matches are always different, and that's, that's why we played the game, boys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit that like button and leave a comment. I do appreciate all your guys' uh, interaction with the videos. Thank you very much. Peace out.